It was Collingwood who were far too good for Port Adelaide in the end. Port kicked six of the first seven. The Pies kicked 11 of the next 12. In the end, the reigning premiers reigned supreme. Uh, before I get your thoughts, Jimmy and Lee, this was Craig McRae, the Pies coach, after the match. We've got a pretty simple formula, really. Like, let's, let's just get the ball going and then turn up and, and have fun doing it. Um, and there was some energy built through that. Like, you could just see it just coming. And um, This group's done it for a while now, knows when it's... We're starting to get our game going. Um, yeah, I think we look way more connected today than what we have in previous weeks. So Collingwood lost their first three. They're now three and three, Lee. How have they turned it around? Well, I mean, I guess they just were... Uh, they, they weren't on the ball in the very part at the start of the... And even yesterday, a quarter time, Port were just killing Collingwood. You thought, oh, just Port are just going to overrun them. But then Collingwood turned it around. Well, for a lot of reasons, I thought Darcy Moore, the way he played the first quarter where we get kept getting caught in between. He just was playing that loose, ineffective defence. Then in the second, third, fourth quarters, he got himself going. And he sort of was a bit of a barometer, I think, for the Collingwood team. All of a sudden, their confidence grew. Hoskin Elliott got into the game. And their last three quarters were outstanding. Jimmy, Port Adelaide? Well, every week we're talking about them and it's either really good or really bad. Yeah, I think they're a really good side and they're really deep and we want to know how they're going to get over that hump and get themselves into the grand final. And you've got to deliver on the big games in the big moments. And uh, some glaring things jumped out to me when they played Collingwood and I've coined it no care pair because they love to call themselves <laughs> the Port Adelaide pair and it's attention to detail so this is the uh, really early in the game this is Will Hoskin Elliott you can see right just near where the goal umpire is standing there just next to the goal post all by himself Will Hoskin Elliott the Port Adelaide player I think it was Houston standing in front he's doing the right thing Soldo trying to come off where's your arm across and this one here Zerk Thatcher's rolled off his man Elias just coughed up that like uh, rotation there mm. You leave Lockie Jones, Paul Lockie Jones, on uh, Mason Cox, who's well over 200 centimetres. We've got another one here. Uh, Elliot just walks over, no body pressure. Again, Burton just trolleys up. Aaliyah has to run him down. You've got to actually be more physical in your attention to detail with your starting points. You can't just keep wandering around looking after yourself. Radagalia, where's your direct opponent? Elliot's first back inside forward 50. And Mason Cox can even body out my check and still mark the footy. And this one here, this is the absolute opposite of what Collingwood was on the day. He absolutely burnt Darcy Burn jones going into an open goal, which would have been a certainty. You've got to have attention to detail and care for your teammates. It mightn't be the sexy things. Put your arm across as defence and then zone off. Everyone was just looking after their own backyard and they got torched for it and they got what they deserved. As Ken Hinckley always says... You get what you deserve in footy, and they got absolutely what they deserved on the weekend. And behind closed doors, Lee, I imagine that Ken Hinckley would have given that exact feedback. Well, that one, that particular one, that was a bad error of judgment by, by Rioli. But, I mean, basically, their big intercept marking defence, uh, Radigalia and uh, Elia and Lea, they, they just couldn't mark it, and at ground level, they were just too slow. And you add Zerk Thatcher to that uh, as well. That Collingwood medium-sized defence really got hold of them. Sorry, forward line, not defence. And they're struggling against top eight teams over the last couple of years, gents. Against uh, top eight teams since 2022, they're 7 and 16. This is a 30% win loss rec record. Against bottom 10 teams, they're 24 and 7. So they are where they are for a reason. And I'm not confident mm. that they're going to perform on the very last day in September. But equally, I think they're going to beat most yeah. poor teams most weeks. Because you can get away with that rubbish against poor teams because they're just going to dump the ball inside forward 50. You can zone off. Yeah. But good teams. What they'll do is they'll actually kick it to advantage and expose you for your lack of defensive effort and just looking after your own backyard. They didn't play as a unit. They played for themselves, especially in the back six. Yeah, it's strong words, Jimmy. And do you think it's the sort of thing that can be coached out of them this week or is it a season-long method? 100%. The worst camera angle for an AFL player is behind the goals footage. Because when you <laughs> sit down on the Monday meeting, yeah. there is nowhere to hide on the field. And do you know what a coach does? He goes... Pause. Yeah. What were you thinking here? <laughs> and do you know what's required of it? And they'll be going through the video like that. They might think, oh, you're being too tough. But we know Port Adelaide are good enough to make the eight. Yeah. But they want to play in a grand final. Yeah. So you've got to go above and beyond. Lee, do you agree? Yeah, no, I think so. I mean, they're very good on their day. But, I mean, they're really... They're two sort of match winners, I guess, or Horn, three of them, Horn Francis and, and Butters and uh, Rosie. They sort of drifted out of the game after a while. I mean, you, you, Collingwood got hold of them, no doubt about that. And they're, they're really uh, disturbing stats. I mean, we know they exist, but they uh, have been... Well, everyone's much better against the bottom half too, <laughs> let's face it. But their record is uh, poorer than most. And I did enjoy what the case. Kane Corn said this morning on the Sunday footy show that Horn Francis, Butters and Rosie are rarely in the same midfield together, which is something that potentially the coaches need to have a look at.